Okay, here we are in Venice, Italy, and I'm, I'm, I'm interested in talking about perfect competition because we always think of perfect competition as being unlimited number of buyers, unlimited number of sellers that would allow uh, individual transactions to take place and, and no one affects the market. In gondola rides, no, regulated monopolies, really what you have here. So I got emu uh, jerky at 12.50 each. The kangaroo jerky is only at uh, 7.50, it's cheaper. The kangaroo meat is easy to come by. Crocodile jerky at 14.50, which is the great Australian taste. They all say that. What I find odd is that beef jerky is uh, 10.50, 10.80. Well, that's almost as much. If you're gonna get 10.80 for beef jerky, you might as well buy some emu jerky. That's, that's right, I'm here at the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, and most people are looking for Nemo, but the heck with him, and uh, all the corals and all that. What I'm actually here for is pirates, out in these waters here. But what's happened is the price of sea cucumber has risen dramatically, and so apparently, according to the uh, news, the Hong Kong, uh, um, I guess we would call them the mafia, to make you start thinking about fiscal policy. I know, it's crazy. This is uh, Pont de Gare in uh, just a little bit, about 20 kilometers north of Nîmes, France. And uh, it was used to bring water to the city of Nîmes. Uh, hey, the largest hydroelectric dam in the world. These half the dam, this side over here is Brazil, that side over there is Paraguay. It's a, a binational operation, which uh, was kind of interesting. They mentioned 3,000 workers, 1,500 of them are Paraguayans, and 1,500 are Brazilians. It supplies a lot of the electricity that leads to Rio de Janeiro. Yeah. High up in the Andes Mountains uh, in uh, western Argentina. And I just want to actually talk about healthcare. You see, we see a little All right, hospital Here I am sign. in the Australian outback. And what do I want to talk about but uh, healthcare? That's right. You see that blue sign there with the white uh, cross? That's the only, the only healthcare services available in these parts. And, um, and, and if that cash was any worse, where, where would you get medical, medical attention beyond that little uh, general store that you got there in town? Uh, they would fly me to Alice Springs, which is five hours away. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, we were thinking about it as well. Like Mark wasn't sure if it needed stitches or not, but we'll just see how it goes over the next couple of days. I mean, it hurts, but it'll, it'll get better there. I've got my tetanus, so. When we talk about right. the determinants of demand, we often talk about income being one of the factors that determines demand. So here I am in Monte Carlo in the Principality of Monaco. Let's take a look. They're preparing for the upcoming Grand Prix of Monaco to be held in nine days from now. See all those bleacher seats? Thousand dollars, more than a thousand dollars a ticket for each of those seats per day for the four-day event. Of course, as we see from the yachts in the harbor, there's plenty of people able to afford that. Again, I'm at the, uh, the famine memorial here in Dublin where uh, they're talking a lot about the potato crop and the potato blight that had wiped out uh, much of the potato crop back in the 18, uh, late 1840s, early, 19, early 1850s. And so <clears throat> they learned to substitute different goods rather than just uh, making potatoes, they, they did crop rotation and they expanded their uh, their inventory of goods. One of the goods that they went to was sugar beets, and for a long time Ireland was producing a lot of sugar beets, which is used to make sugar. But something happened, and they're no longer. I've been across the island here; they're no longer producing sugar beets. The question is why. And for that, I've got to go to another country. <laughs> So I'm here at the site of the Waterloo Battle. This is where Napoleon was defeated. But uh, that's not what I'm watching here. Down in the fields we see sugar beets. That's important because the European Union paid off the Irish sugar beet farmers to um, stop growing sugar beets. Which of course, what's that going to do? It's going to limit this whole thing. Hold it. Brussels, uh, Belgium here. And you see that building with the white swan on it? What's important about that, in 1848, believe it or not, Karl Marx and Frederick Engels met there with a bunch of German labor leaders. This was just before they published the Communist Manifesto. Here in Prague, we see signs of 
poverty. And capitalism. All in one motion. Here at the White House, the home of the president, of course, that's the president of, of the Slovak Republic. Just in case you didn't know, 1993, the Velvet Divorce, Czechoslovakia became two different countries, the, the Czech Republic and the Slovak Republic. And what I really want to talk about is the money. Here's the currency of the, you want to talk about money. Let's talk about the Austrian School of Economics and their theories. Here I am in Vienna, Austria. Let's talk about the, the monetary policies associated with the Austrian Oh, hey, class. I, uh just sitting here in uh, Miltenberg, uh, Germany, and I uh, just bought my first uh, souvenir gift. I got a couple of coins here. I bought them at the antique shop, and uh, what they are mm -hmm. are German marks that uh, were uh, from the Weimar Republic. I got a hundred mark, and a Fünfzig mark, and a thousand mark. That was a time when you could buy barrels full of money you could bring to buy anything because of the Republic. Uh, uh, the Weimar Republic had just printed money and printed money and printed money. Now, I'm sure you've never heard of a nation doing that sort of thing. 